In this example, we're going to be looking at a particular type of series, um, which is called a telescoping series, and we'll be applying the definition of convergence of a series to this example. Um, you can see in this note here that I've described this as a telescoping series, and also there is a later convergence test that we will learn that could just help us in determining convergence or divergence of this series. But in order to actually find the sum, the value of that series, we would need the definition. So um, the definition of convergence or divergence of a series is really helpful for working with this, um, these telescoping series types. And there is a way for us to find a formula for SN in those cases. So let's see how we can go about using the definition on this example. So one thing that we want to notice with our particular sum here, the sum from i equals 2 to infinity of 2 over i squared minus 1, is I do actually have a sum of a rational function where that denominator can be factored. Okay, so notice that our 2 over i squared minus 1 can be written as 2 over i plus 1 times i minus 1. So we're actually going to apply partial fraction decomposition to this example. So I can see how I can write this sum as a form that we can recognize as something that's called telescoping. So notice that this would be a over i plus 1 plus b over i minus 1. So once we clear the fractions with this, notice that I'll have 2 equals a times i minus 1 plus b times i plus 1. Okay, so if I plug in some convenient values, starting with i equals 1, I would have, um, oops, this is, should be plus right there. Um, plug in uh, i equals 1, this would be 0a, and then I'd have 2b. So I see that b would be equal to 1. Clean up that equal sign there. If we plug in i equals negative 1, notice that I'll have 2 equals negative 2a, so a would be equal to negative 1. So what does this mean for our series? We have the sum from i equals 2 to infinity of 2 over i squared minus 1 is equal to the sum from i equals 2 to infinity of a over i plus 1, so that's um, our negative 1 over i plus 1 plus this b of 1 over i minus 1. So I'm going to write this with the positive term first. 1 over i minus 1 minus 1 over i plus 1. So what we have right here is a typical form of a telescoping series where I have um, the sum of something minus something else. Okay, so let's go ahead and figure out what our SN is. Okay, so we know that if I'm going to be applying the definition of convergence of a series, my first step here is to find SN. Okay, so how can I figure out the formula for the um, nth partial sum? So when we're dealing with a telescoping series, um, what we want to do is write out our sum from i equals 2 up to n of y over i minus 1 minus 1 over i plus 1. Okay, versus trying to um, write down like s2, s3, s4 and look for a pattern, I think with telescoping series it's a little bit easier to look at um, what the SN sum looks like. So we'll get a sum of what's in parentheses here with 2 plugged in, plus what happens when I plug in 3, plus what happens when I plug in 4, all the way up to what happens when I plug in n, and then look for simplifying things. Because what's key to a telescoping series is that we're going to get cancellations of terms. So you think about like a kid's telescope, and you can stretch it out you know, look through it and then it collapses back again for, for easy storage, we're going to see that this the terms here collapse in order to um, simplify the, the sum for us. Okay, so remember this i equals 2 up to n, 
our indices, it means we plug in the values between 2 and n. So notice that I have i equals 2, 3, 4, all the way up to n. Okay, that's what I'm thinking about plugging in for i each time. Okay, so if n is the last thing I plug in, I can think about how the second to last thing that I would plug in would be n minus 1, and the third to last thing that I would plug in would be n minus 2, etc. So the idea um, here that I, that I find helpful is we're going to plug in the first couple of values for, for i and the last couple of values for i, just so we can see enough of what this this partial nth sum looks like in order to get um, enough terms to see what the, what the cancellation pattern is and how this is going to simplify. So let's go ahead and write out some terms. So initially I'm going to plug in 2 for i. So I have 1 over 2 minus 1, or 1 over 1. Okay, minus what happens when I plug in 2 here, so this is 1 third. Okay, so that corresponds to i equals 2. Then what happens when I plug in 3? Well, I'll have 1 half minus 1 fourth. Okay, let me plug in 4. We'll have 1 third minus 1 over 5. Okay, if I wanted to go one further here and plug in 5, I have 1 over 4 minus 1 over 6. Okay. So that's just plugging in my first couple of values, so I'm going to do plus dot dot dot. Okay, and I'm going to plug in these last couple of values as well. So if I plug in n minus 2, i equals n minus 2, then this term here becomes 1 over n minus 2 minus 1, or n minus 3, minus what happens when I plug in n minus 2 for i. So I'm going to have n minus 2 plus 1, or n minus 1. Okay, then I'll plug in n minus 1 for i, so this will be 1 over n minus 2. Plug in n minus 1 for i here, that's 1 over n. Okay, and then we'll have what happens when I plug in n for i, i equals n, so this will be 1 over n minus 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. Okay, so that gives us an idea of what our Sn, our nth partial sum in terms of n, looks like. And now I want to look for being able to simplify this. So let me get out a different color here to see the cancellation. So notice that I have minus one-third right here. Then I add a bunch of terms here, and then eventually I add a positive one-third. So I see that that negative one-third and that positive one-third will cancel. Okay, so we're look, looking for cancellation here. And we want to start try to figure out what the cancellation pattern is. Uh, the next thing that I notice that cancels is the fact that I have a negative one-fourth here, and later I add a positive one-fourth, so those things are going to cancel. Looking at these last three terms, I can see I have a positive 1 over n minus 1 and a negative 1 over n minus 1, so those cancel. Okay, so I'm left with a bunch of other terms, so I want to know whether these other terms cancel or not. So now we're, we're going to try to identify a pattern, because some cancellation will occur with things that we haven't written out here that occur somewhere in the middle. Notice that the one-third here was the second term in the parentheses, and it canceled with the first term in the parentheses that was sort of uh, after skipping a term, you know, two terms ahead. Again, this one-fourth, the second thing in the parentheses, canceled with this one-fourth that was the first thing in the parentheses, but ahead of it, okay? So following that pattern, this negative one-fifth, the second thing in the parentheses, should cancel with the term that would come after this one-fourth minus one-sixth. The next term would end up being um, one-fifth minus one-seventh. So this negative one-fifth is going to cancel with something that would come next. Similarly, this negative one-sixth would cancel with the term after that, okay? So now looking at um, some terms that we have left over here, like this 1 over n minus 2. Well, that's the first thing in the parentheses. Okay, well, first thing in the parentheses, like this 1 fourth, canceled with something earlier. Okay, so this 1 over n minus 2 would cancel with the term that would come before this 1 over n minus 3 minus 1 over n minus 1. So that will cancel with something. So I'm just kind of 
putting these little slashes in between to say there is something before that that it would end up canceling with. Okay. Similarly, with this 1 over n minus 3, first thing in the parentheses, it'll cancel with something earlier. Not the term right before it, but the one before that. But that, there will be something for it to cancel with. Okay. So I'm left with four terms that I haven't crossed out yet. So let's think about whether they cancel with anything or not. Okay. Well, this one, that's the first term in the parentheses. We've noticed that the first term in the parentheses always has to cancel with something earlier, but there is no earlier now. Okay, also looking at our terms, we can see that um, we're increasing the denominator here. It's um, in the first thing in the parentheses has a denominator of one, then two, then three, then four. The second thing has a denominator of three, then four, then five, then six. So there's never gonna be a minus one over one. So this is never going to get canceled, so it's going to stay. Similarly, this 1 half, which is the first thing in the parentheses, it would have to cancel with something that would come before this 1 minus 1 third, but there is no before. There's never going to be a negative um, 1 half occurring in this, this sum. The denominators just keep getting bigger, so that term will have to stay. Okay. Looking at these last couple of terms, this negative 1 over n is the second thing in the pair of parentheses. Looking at our cancellation patterns, second things in the parentheses cancel with something that's ahead. So this like negative one fourth canceled with a one fourth that was ahead. So I wouldn't get a positive one over n until the term that would come after this one over n minus one minus one over n plus one. But my sum has stopped. This is only the nth sum. So this minus one over n will never cancel with anything. Similarly, this minus 1 over n plus 1 okay, would have to cancel with something that's two terms ahead, but there is no more ahead, so that one has to stay. Okay, So we can see how this sum collapses to just 1 plus a half minus 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1. Okay, And different types of telescoping series would have different sorts of cancellation patterns. So you'd have to figure out what's going to um, cancel and what you'd be left over with to figure out how your SN simplifies. Okay, So we looked for our, our cancellation pattern. We determined what SN is. Okay, So a lot of the work of working with our telescoping series um, involves writing out these, these terms and looking for how it's going to simplify. Once we have a formula for Sn, then we have to compute the limit as n goes to infinity of our Sn. So in this case, that's the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 half minus 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1. So notice as n goes to infinity, this 1 over n and this 1 over n plus 1 are going to go to 0. So I'm left with 1 plus 1 half, or 3 halves. Okay, So we can see here for our conclusion that since our sequence of partial sums here, Sn, converges to 3 halves, the series that we have in this problem, which is the sum from i equals 2 to infinity of 2 over i squared minus 1, um, converges by the definition. Okay, and because it specifically converges to three halves, we can say its sum is three halves. Okay, so you notice for different kinds of telescoping series, you'll have different sorts of patterns, you'll get different kinds of things for your Sn that you'll have to take the limit of. We'll see some telescoping series that converge, some that diverge, and a whole variety of values that a telescoping series might converge to.